Hi guys, it's your curious and awkward friend Gossi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm super happy and excited to see you here and take you with me around Chelsea. And this is one of the neighborhoods where I usually come literally every weekend. So it's very close to my heart. And close to my wallet because it's very expensive. So I'm super excited to show you around. I want to take you with me to the market and we're gonna have some delicious lunch. Let's go. And if you like this type of content where I show you different parts of London, uh, give you some recommendations, or we travel around, <laughs> traveling is allowed, don't forget to subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you all for being here with me. No, I'm honestly super grateful and happy for every single one of you. Chelsea is considered to be the most desirable area on where people want to live and it is extremely expensive, luxurious and exclusive. In today's video, I actually want to give you 8 suggestions on things that you can do on a budget. And just to give you an idea of how expensive is Chelsea, just want to tell you that an average one bedroom apartment there costs around £2,400 per month or if you're looking for a two bedroom apartment, the price goes around £4,000 per month and to be honest with you I have no idea how do people actually afford that. Let's start with where is Chelsea and how can you actually get there. Chelsea is located in southwest London and it is bounded to the south by the River Thames and from King's Road it's three miles to Sharing Cross. It is also very close to Sloan Square which is also the closest tube station. And a little bit of history. The the name Chelsea originates from an old English word and it actually means landing place for limestone and King's Road was named after Charles II and it was built to connect his palace in Whitehall to Hampton Court. By the 60s, Chelsea and in particular the King's Road, which is the main road, became the centerpiece of mod culture and the swinging 60s in the UK. It was often frequented by cultural icons such as Twiggy and also Andy Warhol. What are the best and most affordable things that you can do in this area? First of all, and this seems to be extremely extremely popular is to take photos for Instagram and the best places where you can do that are Ivy Chelsea Garden which has these lovely flowers right in front but also the place inside it's super Instagrammable but also a little bit expensive so keep this in mind. You can go in front of uh, Peggy portion to get a cupcake and guys I have also been there I have done that so not gonna judge you for this as well you can also go to this lovely beautiful colorful houses and it kind of seems like you're in Notting Hill or you can go shopping because this area has both more kind of affordable brands and fast fashion ones to high street or luxury brands so it's I think it's a good mix of uh, whatever budget you have or if your budget is kind of zero which is mine most of the times then you can just go window shopping because honestly it's so freaking beautiful just to see the windows from outside best thing actually which you could do is go to Sachi Gallery. Oh my god you guys I'm so disappointed that I couldn't take you with me because of lockdown and galleries at the moment are closed. This is a private art uh, collection gallery which is completely free. You can see forward thinking contemporary exhibitions. One of my favorite places in Chelsea is the Physic Garden and you guys it's open literally every day. Of course we are in lockdown at the moment so unfortunately it was closed but I definitely suggest you going there whenever you get the chance. And another thing which you can do totally for free and also during lockdown is go around the area and look for blue plagues which have been given to people to commemorate them and uh, one of them is actually in front of Oscar Wilde's house but you can find many of them in this area because apparently here also lived 
famous people like George Eliot, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, as I said, Oscar Wilde. So also, there is a home monument uh, to the author of Mary Poppins. And actually, with Ben, we went to see the Oscar Wilde one. In which floor do you think he lived? Or like, you think he had the whole house? I think he had the whole house. Yeah, might be. Because mm. maybe rents back down back then didn't cost as much. Drum rolls, most important question, where should you eat? And if you guys know me or if you have seen literally any of my other videos, you know that I take my lunches and food extremely seriously. And my biggest suggestion is uh, to go on a Saturday and go to the lovely food market. Open every Saturday from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. And it is in Duke of York Square, which is also very close to Sloan Square and it's uh, recognized of one of London's finest food markets which offers fresh produce uh, together with an eclectic range of international eating experience. At least this is what food critics says, but say but I can tell you that there is so much choice and variety there are more than 40 stalls you can find there anything from French cheeses to cupcakes, Malaysian cuisine, Moroccan cuisine and of course typical British foods, lots of cakes uh, and there are actually more than 150 small specialty food, pro uh, food producers that are involved with an average of uh, 40 stalls that are setting up every single week and uh, usually this is right in the middle of the square but now because of the measures uh, during lockdown actually they were put uh, right in front of the Saatchi gallery and it's so beautiful and I would say even more enjoyable just because we had more space and it wasn't as crowded as usual because once we went there and we had to wait like 20 minutes to get a burger and Ben how do you feel about this bread? they're selling like one shabata for like 420 mm -hmm. with three pounds we got 16 kilos of flour to do the math you can pay by card at every stall. And we have a bunch of pancakes. I, I did my uni in the Netherlands, you know, in Utrecht. It was really cool. And did you use free those pancakes? I think we got them during, you know, like the introduction. We just say, oh, these are like Dutch pancakes on some bullshit. I mean, they're not really fun. Considering that I have a whole dance for pancakes, he's telling me that he's not a fan. I'm quite offended. Pancakes time! Pancakes time! Yay! Pancakes! Let's go! This is the Korean place. And just look how many people were queuing. And what did you get? So I got some like uh, curry goat with uh, plantain, rice and yummy stuff. It was seven pounds. It's a, it's a you know, full you know, meal box. And that's the goat and that's the rice. Yeah. Mmm! Mm, wow, I love it. Yeah, I want more. Uh, Masi asked me to like, deliver a special message, so make sure you like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. For more free lunches for Ben. Oh yeah, actually, the, the, my lunch was sponsored from Vas by Vasi, so like, yeah, please, I'm, I'm very hungry. I decided to take my meal from here, but please pay lots of attention to everything, because I asked them, oh, can I get the tuna one, because I don't eat chicken. They just smiled, said yes, and started preparing my bowl with tuna. Spoiler alert, or at least what I thought it's tuna. I really wanted to get this bowl bowl. Let's see. Super nice. It has tuna, cabbage, bell peppers, carrots, and I think mango. And it was eight pounds. Eight you know pounds. <laughs> Flat bread. Mm -hmm. My, it's actually super big. Mine is with spinach and cheese. Mine is with lamb. And guys, my lunch doesn't really end up so well because. As you may know, I don't really eat meat and at what was supposed to be tuna turns out to be meat. So yeah, I'm a bit embarrassed, but, I, but I'm just gonna go and what tell them. Big. Why? Yeah, I want to take it back. Oh, all right, are we going? Yes. Are we going to make a mess? Yeah, let's go and make a mess. I'm really sorry, okay, but it was also like eight pounds, which is quite a lot. 
guys you don't know what happened so what i happened? went to complain about uh, apparently this meat and uh, that was no tuna and they were like yeah but we're a plant-based restaurant we don't sell any any meat and i was like trying to convince them no but i'm so sure this is meat and i'm like no everything here is a hundred percent vegan i'm like ah. If you come literally any other day of the week, which is not Saturday or it's just the evening, I really, really suggest you going to this noodle bar, which I wish I could pronounce the name. I would write it here. It's extremely affordable and uh, the portions are very generous as well. So uh, for eight pounds, you can get uh, noodles or an amazing noodle soup, which honestly, it's so big that uh, even Ben gets full after finishing it. Or if you're in the mood of uh, something a little bit more elevated, my suggestion is going to this Italian restaurant called Polpo, uh, which we usually go with Ben. Or of course, don't forget there is a Gordon Ramsay restaurant where I have never been because I heard it's extremely expensive, but if it's within your budget, just to let you know, it's there for you. Hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like that. And also Christmas content is coming very, very soon. Love you loads, bye. Bye.